Hello, and welcome to my channel. I am the Tulsa Astro Geek. In this video, I'm reviewing the ZWO C-Star S50 Smart Telescope. Uh, if you've not already seen my unboxing video, watch it now. Let's get started with the specs. It boasts a triple apochromatic 50 millimeter lens, meaning that it eliminates all of the purple halos around bright stars you'd get with cheaper optics. For the camera, it uses the Sony IMX462 uh, camera sensor, which is a two megapixel uh, sensor, very sensitive to low light. Uh, it has a 250 millimeter focal length, giving an f5 focal ratio. It has 64 gigs of internal storage, and a 6,000 milliamp hour battery life, which according to the website uh, provides up to six hours of usage. In my experience on chilly nights, uh, running nonstop, I can get about four to four and a half hours of runtime before the battery dies, which is pretty good. That's plenty of time for an evening of virtual stargazing. But if you want to leave it running all night to you get really good pictures of uh, some faint object, you will need to plug an external uh, power supply into the USB Type-C charge port, which is right here on the side. Uh, it uses an altitude azimuth, or Altaz mount, meaning that to point the telescope, it simply rotates the base left and right and the lens up and down, as opposed to an equatorial telescope, which is more common for astrophotography, which aligns with the Earth's rotation and allows for much longer uh, image exposures. With the Altas mount, it is limited to 10 second exposure times, and which is one of the limitations with this device. Uh, one of the other limitations being the small camera sensor, which limits the field of view that you would get uh, compared to, say, a DSLR or other more expensive camera attached to a traditional telescope with similar specs. It is a full go-to, which means that you simply control it from an app on your smartphone, uh, tell it what you want to look at, say, Fit the Andromeda Galaxy, hit go to, it will automatically locate and align to the Andromeda Galaxy, and then it will track the Andromeda Galaxy as it moves across the sky with the Earth's rotation. Um, it is very easy to use. Once you get aligned, simply tap, it'll be again taking pictures, and the CSR app will live stack the images, meaning that with each new 10 second image that it takes, it will combine that with all of the previous images, providing better and better and better pictures on your phone or tablet as you uh, keep making pictures longer and longer with the S50. Uh, it supports five viewing modes in the app, which are scenery, uh, lunar, solar, stargazing, and now planetary, which is a new feature um, in the latest update of the CSR app. Let's also talk about some of the built-in accessories in the S50. It includes uh, a dew heater and three built-in uh, light filters, including a dark filter which blocks all light and allows it to take uh, dark calibration frames, which uh, remove uh, sensor read noise from the images. Uh, includes a UV IR cut filter, which blocks out the ultraviolet and infrared wavelengths uh, from the images, which can improve things like wooded stars or uh, some other unwanted effects for certain targets. Also includes a dual narrowband light pollution filter, which blocks all of the visible light except for uh, two wavelengths or two bands of wavelengths uh, associated with uh, most nebulas that you would take pictures of. Uh, it is fantastic for getting uh, sharp images of 
nebulas, especially in high light pollution areas where it would be very difficult um, otherwise. And it also includes a external solar filter that snaps on in front of the lens uh, for the solar mode. It is very important that you never point the lens at or near the sun without that filter installed or you will damage the equipment. I will now move to uh, demonstrating the Z-Star app in the different viewing modes. This is the C-Star app uh, from which you will control all of the functions of the C-Star S50. Uh, it has a very nice and clean interface. Uh, from here you can see a weather summary to make sure conditions are good for viewing uh, right here in this area. Uh, easy access to the five viewing modes. Uh, a summary of astronomy targets you can view uh, if it's nighttime, and stories about upcoming astronomical events. And down here at the bottom is uh, some different modes you can choose as well. Right now it is daytime. I'm going to go into the scenery mode. Just tap the button and it goes straight into the camera. It takes it uh, just a minute. Uh, the in scenario mode, the camera is controlled with an on-screen joystick, which you activate by touching the circle. Uh, simply tap the circle and drag your finger in the direction you want to move the camera. Uh, there are two movement or slowing modes, fast and slow. Uh, you can see that slow is much slower than fast. Uh, fast if you, is uh, a bit crazy for fine tuning, but it's good for pointing in the general direction than fine tuning with slow. It is, fast is also sensitive to how far you move your finger. So you can see if I strike my finger a little bit in the circle, it does move much slower. So you can uh, pinpoint a bit easier in fast mode. Uh, before you switch over to slow for fine viewing. There is an autofocus feature, it's tap for AF. And whichever part of the screen has the green square, it's going to focus on that part. You can see the focus moving in and out as it tests to find the perfect focus. Uh, if I tap it again and choose something further away, it will adjust focus to uh, that distance. Point uh, I'm going to point at uh, this pasture grass. Focus on that. And you can see it gives you a really sharp image of you're focusing on. These things that are further away are wavy because of turbulence in the air uh, rising up right above that pasture between me and the more distant objects. In the scenery mode, there are three capture options. There is time lapse, and you can choose the timeout setting, so you can take a image frame every one second, you know, two, five, twenty, up to one, one frame every minute, depending on what sort of a time lapse you're looking at. You can capture individual photos, or you can take a video. Uh, simply hit the back button on your phone, go back to the main screen, where you can choose other modes. I'm now going to attach the 
included solar filter and check out the solar mode. It is extremely important that you never enter solar mode or point the telescope near the sun without it first attaching the included solar filter. I'll now enter solar mode. It gives you the reminder. Uh, I have installed it, so I'll tap installed and shooting. I have found a few times that it can have trouble auto looking the sun. And if that happens, uh, you can tap the stop right there and manually point uh, the telescope at the sun using the on-screen joystick. And it should automatically locate the sun. As you can see, uh, there are are several sunspots very easily visible today, uh, which is very cool. This is the most uh, sunspots I have seen while testing the S50. Like in scenery mode, there are three capture you can take, time-lapse, photo, and video. Uh, I've been using the photo mode. Uh, I, I think the time-lapse and video modes would be more useful for something like a solar eclipse, or if you're trying to capture solar transits, such as, you know, ISS running in front of the sun, or, you know, maybe airplanes running in front of the, front of the sun, then a video would be useful for that. Uh, you can also adjust the brightness by tapping the little plus minus icon right here. So we drag it darker or brighter, or tap the A for auto brightness. Uh, if the sun happens to be out of focus, you can again use the autofocus. And you can see it going through its focus routine. So back to a sharp image of those sunspots. You can also pinch to zoom to zoom in. And you can see that there are actually some clouds uh, passing over the sun, which is also pretty cool. I will zoom in on the sunspots a bit. And if you're wondering why the image is a little bit wobbly, that's actually the Earth's atmosphere um, moving slightly and causing the light from the sun to bend, creating the wobbling effect. If you want to view without all of the user interface in the way, you can simply tap the four outward arrows at the top. And it will hide most of the UI giving you a clearer picture of whatever you're observing. Simply tap the inward arrows to bring back the UI. Let's take a look at the planetary mode. With a look at Jupiter, the easiest way to get to a particular planet in the planetary mode is to go into the sky atlas, tap the search icon at the top right, then it will give you a list of the uh, searches you can choose from. Look at tonight's best, which will give you a list of the brightest targets in the night sky. Simply tap the planet you want to look at. Uh, in this case, I'll select Jupiter. And it will begin automatically aligning the telescope to the e planet Jupiter. It is now centered on Jupiter. Uh, you can see Jupiter here is a bright disk with the four Galilean moons, which are the four brightest moons of Jupiter, uh, lined up in a row uh, around it. You can adjust the brightness by tapping the plus and minus icon. You can increase the brightness to make the moons of Jupiter easier to see. Or you can reduce the brightness in order to try and make out some of the surface or atmospheric features of Jupiter itself. So with uh, brightness reduced uh, almost all the way, uh, it's hard to see here, but you can just barely make out the brightest bands in Jupiter's atmosphere. 
under better conditions, uh, better scene conditions, uh, you could probably make out uh, those bands more clearly. We're now going to take a look at the Pac-Man Nebula to demonstrate the S50's live stacking capability. And what that does is it will take a series of 10 second exposures and with each new image it captures, it will combine the new image with the previous images, making a progressively more detailed image of the nebula. This is M42, the Orion Nebula. It is one of my favorite nebulas, and you can see even in the preview before it begins stacking the image, it is very bright and easy to see. Uh, but you'll see that as it begins stacking, it's going to get really bright and beautiful very quickly. Now that you've seen the C-Star app in action, I will give my conclusions and final thoughts about the S50. Um, first thought is, who is the S50 for? Uh, I see it as targeting two audiences. One audience is people who are brand new to astronomy, or maybe they've tried astronomy and were frustrated with the learning curves. And it's one something that's very easy to use um, and doesn't get up and running very quickly. Uh, for most people, the S50, I think, is a great option. It is extremely easy to use, as you've seen with the app. It requires no prior knowledge of astronomy. Uh, if you can use a smartphone or a tablet, you can operate the S50 uh, without any problems. The second audience I see the targeting is people like me who already have at least one um, full astronomy rig, uh, been doing this a while, uh, we've done the learning curves, we have all of that, but we want something that is very quickly set up, is it for, you know, doing some light EAA or um, photography while my main rig is in action. The second question is, you know, what are the pros and cons of using the S50 versus, you know, buying all the parts to create a full astronomy or astrophotography uh, rig. Uh, one, as I've mentioned, is the cost. It is at $499 US dollars price tag, uh, far more affordable than purchasing all of those components individually. Um, it is, is it extremely easy to use, uh, or has no prior knowledge of astronomy or astrophotography to get going. The downside is that, uh, you know, if you're in this looking for, you know, say this is your first telescope, but you want to uh, dig into this hobby, you want to go through the learning curves, you want to learn the equipment and the processes and the techniques, uh, this is not really going to help you on that journey. Uh, because it, it is so easy to use it and automated, it does everything for you. Um, so because of that, um, you know, you will learn about the sky, which is fantastic, but you're not gonna learn much about um, the techniques of doing astrophotography. Uh, the exception to that is you, you turn on the setting in the app to save individual images. Um, you can copy the uh, individual exposures to your computer and process them themselves and learn image processing, which is a huge part of astrophotography. I am the Intelsa Astro Geek. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.